it's apparently cringe week at DC Comics. Not only do we have the latest issue of Superman, Son of kal we got another issue of Nightwing. We got the premiere of Titty Howard on Catwoman. There's some other stuff in there, but there's one comic book whose cringe shines above all others, and it is Nubia in the Amazons number four. This thing is it's magnificent. When you read this comic book and you see some of the some of the actions, it's the dialogue, really. It's the dialogue that puts Nubia in Amazon so far over the top. It's cheesy. It's out of place. It's toxic. It's everything that you've come to know and love from Vida Ayala in a beautifully wrapped box, courtesy of co-writer Stephanie Williams as well. This is essentially, I don't know, lesbian fanfic. There's an audience for that, I guess. I don't know that there's an enormous audience at DC Comics and for Nubia to be lesbian fan fiction, but if you were interested in the way that Vida Ayala and Stephanie Williams would pick up uh, on a woman as they were saving them from mayhem, this is the comic book for you. If you were interested in the way that Vida Ayala would feel if they were able to take charge one day and save somebody in peril and then, you know, take them home, have some sweet, sweet love with them. This is the combo for you. But if you like superhero action and you like good, you know, coherent storytelling, if you like Nubia, if you like DC Comics, if you like good good comic book storytelling, this, is, this isn't the comic book for you. This isn't the comic book for anybody. But this is the comic book for Thinking Critical today. Normally, this comic book would get the worst of the week treatment with Doc, but I, I, I don't love Doc. But I respect him enough not to make him read this comic book, and it's so bad it deserved its own video. Talking about the cringe dialogue and the toxic, I don't know, toxic pickup artist that is Nubia in this comic book. There are so many weird things going on in this particular comic book. Basically, it's just a bunch of meetings. There's some meetings, and then there's a meeting about that meeting, and then there's another meeting about that meeting, and then there's another meeting about all the other meetings that happened. And as they're meeting, there is a flashback. And what are they meeting about? They're meeting about Medusa. You know the femme fatale from Greek lore that was turned into a monster and could turn people into stone just by looking at her face? It turns out, perhaps, Medusa was the victim in all of this. Listen, they weren't bad all along. It wasn't really their fault. They were abused, really. It's man's fault. <laughs> You're gonna, whatever. So that's the thing. And then there's this flashback. There's a teacher with her students at, a, at the museum in Chicago where you can see the, the lions from the movie The Ghost in the Darkness. And apparently there's a manacore shows up and who would, wouldn't you know it? Nubia shows up to save him. And that sets the scene. We gotta, we gotta talk about this. this. This is magnificent. Right off the bat, the manacore's coming. Nubia saves this teacher who, right like the page before this, pushes her student and says, out of the way, sugar grits, or something like that. I thought first I thought it said sugar tits, but it actually said sugar grits. No one speaks like that. And then we get this wonderful scene, and this teacher tells Nubia, thank you. And Nubia says, You can thank me by clearing the area, beautiful. <laughs> Are you kidding me? She's literally fighting a, a beast, but she has time to throw some foreplay out there. A little pickup artist line. If they did this with a male hero, this would be done intentionally but it would be done to teach the hero a lesson. Don't take your eye off the ball and don't be hitting on ladies while you're trying to save them. Just because you save them does not entitle you, sir, to a date. But if you're a Nubia, and this is Nubia the Amazons written by Vita Ayala and Stephanie Williams, and Nubia is your own insert character, you can get as toxic as you want and you can certainly get fresh with the person that you're saving and using said incident to try to bed them. When this school teacher walks out of the museum afterwards, apparently there's this dirty old white man. Someone's got to be an old white dude, right? He tries to, I guess, sexually assault her. Right? There's no other way to put it. And Nubia once again steps in for the save. And the teacher says, whoa, you're amazing. This is the second time you saved me today. And Nubia says, oh, it's nothing, sugar tits. Where are you headed? Doesn't seem too safe around here. Manticore man, I'll walk with you. The teacher says, oh, you don't have to do that. I'm almost home. I'm sure you have somewhere else to be. Maybe another time. You have a keen eye. I like that. Move of throwing in a, a subtle compliment there. Very toxic of you, Nubia. Very toxic of you, Via and, and Stephanie Williams. You're partially right. I do have somewhere else to be, but I'd feel better making sure you get home safely. Bound, chicka, bow, bow. 
when you get two female characters in a comic book written by two lesbians, they are absolutely going to be lesbians. So, of course, the teacher says, protective, gorgeous, and kind? I like that. And then she says, well, this is me. Thank you for walking with me. You're welcome, sugar tits. I um, don't hold your tongue. Oh, I bet you don't want her to hold her tongue. My goodness. If you did this with Guy Gardner or Batman or just any male character, Tony Stark, the writer would get obliterated for even thinking of putting this in the story and even inferring that this school teacher that was saved was not strong enough on their own to walk home and get themselves home at night. And that just because they saved him, they immediately wanted to, uh, you know, fornicate with him, coitus, whatever you want to call it. But if you are V.I. Allen, Stephanie Williams, you're allowed to do this with Nubia and make her a pickup artist. She should have her own TV show on MTV talking about all the greatest pickup lines and, you know, where do you put the, I don't know, the, the perfume and all that stuff to make sure that you score on every date. And the flashback continues. Apparently their time is over. People are staring at me like I'm the third head of Hydra. Well, that's because you're wildly gorgeous. They probably think you just stepped out of the Johnson Publishing Company building fresh off a of Jet Beauty of the Week photo shoot. Somebody wrote that. Someone was paid to write that. Actually, two people were paid to write that. That's what's wrong with DC Comics and comic books in general. Somebody got paid for that. It's just beautiful cringe. That's what this is. And then, uh, of course, Nubia doesn't know what Jet, the Jet photo of the week is. Says, the what? Never mind. What'd you think of the movie? <laughs> Somebody got paid to write this, too. I enjoyed the fighting, but Foxy Brown is such a peculiar name. No more peculiar than Nubia. I chose my name. Peculiar and lovely. Hey, do you Amazons ever take vacations? Vacation. Yeah. You come from a paradise. What good is it if you can't enjoy it while you're not working? I'm sure you miss a lot guarding the door. As champion, I must always stand guard. Taking time off, as you call it, would cost. What is it? Something from your boss at the magical floating island. It's not floating. It's just kind of uh, hovering. But yes, it is. I'm needed. Will you come back soon? I wouldn't want to miss out on saving you for a third time. And of course, Nubia is, is bawling her eyes out as she's walking away. This is Vida Ayala and Stephanie Williams' Ode to Terrible. Their self-insert lesbian action-adventure fantasy story here. It's so awful. You couldn't do this with the male character. And you shouldn't do this with the male character. The dialogue's awful. The setup of the romance is even worse. Nothing here is, is even readable for the most part. And this story appears to have nothing at all to do with the actual story where everyone's having meetings. I think maybe this was just put in to have some action scenes with the manticore itself. Perhaps. I, I do think, I think Nubia might fight a, uh, a Hydra at the end. I don't remember. This This comic book's bad. But there's there's more to this. This entire comic book, from beginning to end, is some. It's the worst dialogue. This makes Brian Michael Bendis read like Quentin Tarantino. Let's just put it that way. I cannot just tell you about it. I do have to show you just a, a couple of samples, a couple of more tastes of just how bad a Vidiala, Stephanie Williams, Nubia the Amazon's comic can be. So Nubia just made a decision. She says, I know. I've made my decision. <laughs> I know. I could tell by your sure footsteps. <laughs> What's crazy about this is you can tell that most people in the comic industry have never, ever held a position of leadership. They've never made an important decision. They certainly never passed down an important decision. And this is what Vita Ayala and Stephanie Williams thinks it seems like or what it feels like when you're in some type of position of power or responsibility and you make a decision. And that's why it reads so poorly, because they have no life experience. You can see that in this page. I know I could tell by your sure footsteps. Get the hell out of here with that, but it gets worse. We got Penelope, queen, first, if I may. I want to start by saying how deeply sorry I am that I did not come to you as soon as I could about my vision. I just did not know what to do. I felt like you had already had your hands full with the emergence of the new Amazons after the Well of Souls opened, and then needing to find a suitable champion for Doom's Doorway. I'm rambling. I meant only to help, but managed to make things worse. Please forgive me. Comic books are an action-based medium. You could have summarized that bit of dialogue in two sentences. I'm sorry I didn't tell you about my visions, but we need to talk. <laughs> but it, this thing is just filled to the brim, which is pointless, useless, terrible dialogue. And that's what this comic book is. These are the hallmarks of a Vida Ayala comic. Apparently the hallmarks of a Stephanie Williams comic. It's time for Nubia to start making excuses for Medusa. Medusa is not going about things as she has in the past. I've had a few encounters with her 
during my years guarding the door. She's different. And Bia's visions lead me to believe handling this as I would have before will only be a temporary solution. We've had enough of those. Hurt people often hurt others in return. <laughs> oh, man. I've seen after school specials with more adult, intense, believable dialogue than that one. Hurt people often hurt others in return. Can you imagine if when they were making the G.I. Joe cartoons in like the 80s and whatever, and, they, you know, knowing there's half the battle and there's always a lesson within the story. And it, at the end, the lesson was hurt people often hurt others in return. There'd be no G.I. Joe now. It's so stupid. Nobody could take dialogue like that seriously. Not even children. It's laughable. And here's the last one. We got to hear we got to hear Medusa making excuses for herself. My victimhood did not grant me access to paradise. It banished me to the depths of nothingness. The only difference between your sisters and I lies in the hands of the same goddess who blessed you Amazons but cursed me instead. I'm not the bad guy here. It's the goddess's fault. I'm the victim here. Oh my goodness. But who are we kidding? We've read enough Vidal comics. At this point, we know Vidal would ruin the joke. Vidal would make Doctor Doom the least intimidating character in the world. If you're DC and you're Marvel, you cannot keep giving this writer characters that you ever, ever in your life intend to make money with. They're going to make them a complete joke with their terrible dialogue, their worst stories, and their propensity to use the exact same weird self-insert comic writing tropes as they have in every single fucking comic book they've written in the last three years. I hope you enjoyed Newbie and the Amazons number four a lot more than I did. This thing was painful to get through. It is a lot of dialogue. It's a lot of terrible dialogue. It's a really bad story. And there's absolutely no way that you could ever do this weird pickup artist storyline with a male character today. You would get burned at the stake. But if it's your lesbian fanfic self-insert character, Apparently that's okay. In fact, this probably got three or four headlines talking about what a powerful, rich story it was. How empowering? Empowering for who? A couple weeks back, Vidal actually went onto social media and tried to influence Marvel Comics hiring practices for a new assistant editor position. My good friend Gervain Dargan started the comic book industry as an assistant editor, actually as an intern, and then as an assistant editor. He joined me. We talked all about it and the issues that he had about what they were saying. And if you haven't watched that video, it's right here. I think you'll enjoy it if you can't get enough Vidal cringe. 